Hi right, guys, thank you. Uh, my name is Joanna and I am also known as Coach Joe on the soccer field and we are launching Let's Kick It. I am so excited because our first guest, Jackie Gutierrez, uh, she is the writer and founder of Women Kick Balls. And most of you are wondering, what, what does that mean? <laughs> so we have Jackie here. Um, thank you so much. She's joining, up, joining us from California and uh, she's gonna tell us more about that. So Jackie, you wanna tell us a little bit more about you and Women Kick Balls? Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, yeah, so I created Women Kick Balls, uh, gosh, back in January 2019. So being a sports journalist, I, um, yeah, have been wanting to pursue this dream since I was 17 years old. And I know it's weird because I still look 17, but I've been on this journey for like five or six years now. And um, yeah, having my own independent news source has been so fun, so challenging, but um, just growing as a sports journalist and getting to yeah, connect with people over soccer from around the world is always like super fun. And so my goal is to authentically tell players stories and um, yeah, just to be able to represent women well. I feel like um, obviously there's a lot of, you know, uh, not issues, I guess, but just things with women in sports and they don't always get the attention or platforms that they deserve. So my focus is to really elevate their voice and to just show those stories. So yeah, I'm excited. And thanks for having me on to chat more about soccer and anything else that comes up as well. No, that's awesome. That's amazing. Um, so I guess we'll get started. Uh, I want to just start. Can you take us back in time when you first fell in love with the sport? Yeah. Um, so I actually grew up playing soccer, gosh, for like 10 years. And um, so it was always just super fun for me. I was that kid who like literally showed up to soccer practice reading books. So um, I was just always very fascinated with stories and just seeing how through words you can like visually see so much. And so, yeah, that always kind of just inspired me when it came to like soccer and writing. And um, and as a high schooler, I, uh, you know, went, ran into some health issues during my senior year. So unfortunately, I had to stop playing. But it was something that I was very involved in from a young age. My whole family was involved. Like we were that soccer family that went to tournaments every weekend. And so like it was just so fun growing up in that sport. And I was on a pretty competitive team as well. So we were just like used to winning. And I think that was just like really fun um, to be a part of. And then, of course, like growing up and the first game I ever watched of professional women's soccer was the U.S. Women's National Team at the 2011 Women's World Cup final when we lost against Japan. And um, that just like hooked me in. And I remember thinking like, I know what it's like to be on a winning team and like seeing, you know, these women lose, like it was just so devastating, but their like resilience and the response was just so inspiring. And so that kind of like clicked for me of wanting to like combine that passion of writing and soccer and just to like see where it takes me. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm feel like I'm barely scratching the surface when it comes to journalism, but I'm excited to see like where else it's going to go. So yeah, definitely just sparked from my experience, like as a player growing up. That's awesome. So let me ask you, what position or positions did you play as a player? <laughs> yeah, I played defense. Well, actually, I kind of started out forward a little bit, um, which was super fun. And then I played defense. And then I also kind of played goalie. I know it's weird, like my 5'2 self, you know, probably not the best goalkeeper, but like it was so fun. And I, um, yeah, just like love that because I also like really looked up to Hope Solo growing up. And so anytime I was in the back of the net, I was like, I know I'm not Hope Solo, but I just kind of like... Like, I feel like I'm embracing that. And so, like, that was a huge inspiration for me. But, yeah, those are um, just kind of where I was out in the field. Yeah, no, props to the keepers. Uh, my dad tried teaching me to be goalie. <laughs> and defense. So, yeah. I mm -hmm. that one. Um, my yeah. Um, so, I guess, you know, tell us that you're the owner of Women Kick Balls. And um, I guess, like, how long have you been writing? I know you said 10 years as a player. But, like, when did you mm -hmm. have that, find that passion to write? Yeah, so actually at 17, I remember my Uncle Joe, I always tell this story when I talk about um, women kick balls, but he at 17 was like, Jackie, what do you want to do after high school? And I was like, I don't know, I want to be a sports journalist, but like, I don't really know how to get started or what to do. Mm -hmm. And my mindset was like, I'll just go to school and then like start writing about soccer. And he was like, Jackie, you got to get experience now. Like, let's get you a website, like start a blog and all these things. And it was just kind of crazy because like growing up, obviously, like most people like your parents are like your supporters and they you know believe in everything you do but and my parents you know do yeah like props to them but 
to have someone like my uncle Joe who saw that potential and someone, um, you know, just as successful and like outgoing as he is, like that was so inspiring. So yeah, I started writing at 17 on a tiny little website that literally him and my parents are the only ones reading it. Um, so I was doing that. And yeah, then I just kind of branched out from there and got um, a lot of opportunities to write for like numerous sports publications. So in total, I want to say like, gosh, I don't know, six, six and a half years of writing. But the past, um, yeah, 20, since 2019 have been just what women kick balls, whereas starting out, I was kind of writing for a couple publications and then like still trying to manage my own thing. And it was just kind of hectic. But now I've just like fully dedicated um, my time into that and like creating, you know, a brand and, and whatnot. I'm sure, you know, it's there's a lot of work that goes into it being a one person show. So yeah, it's not just like, Oh, I'll like write when I can, or if I have time, it's like I dedicate and like carve out my week um, around games and, you know, just make it work. Yeah. And there's so many leagues going on that you have to like really manage your time plus mm-hmm. you're in school. So it's really managing your time. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, so one thing, I guess I've been, subscribed to the newsletter since angel city fc the chicks that you did the podcast yeah yeah that's so awesome thanks for that (laughs) i was like oh man this is how i get uh, caught up with everything so (laughs) as a reader fan what can we find or look forward to in your newsletters for the ones that haven't heard of you yeah so I like you said touched on it perfectly there's so many leagues and so many things to cover with women's soccer and yeah being a one-person show like I can't watch every soccer game that exists um that would be like really cool but I just can't so for me um I've grown up with the National Women's Soccer League or NWSL and the U.S. Women's National Team and so those are the teams that I predominantly cover um I'll try to cover some news in like other leagues or like major things that happen um that really you know promote like a first female coach or different things like that in other countries but yeah I do like weekly recaps of NWSL games and U.S. Women's National Team games along with like any news or updates that happen on that so yeah as an email subscriber like or I think for me um, even as like a fan and then like you know getting into journalism I always just hated that there was like paid subscriptions on like you know websites for trying to stay up to date with news Mm -hmm. so uh, I wanted to make one kickball as a place where people can have accessible content that's still like quality work and provides a lot of detail and context just because I yeah find it to be annoying to like read something and two sentences in like that's all you get so um, I wanted to make it accessible to people so yeah you can find a lot of stuff on NWSL and player features and I get to interview players and write stories about them so yeah that's like one way you can uh, or one thing to expect really and of course like I'm pretty like personal with people so whenever someone does subscribe which is like totally free I always uh, send a free like sticker and the note um, just because I like yeah love getting to like connect with people so that's a little bit about like what I do and just kind of um, yeah the connections that I want to make beyond just like getting someone's email address it's more of just like I want to um stay connected and like just be sure that like I can do as like what I can but yeah also do like different um Instagram lives with sometimes players and on Twitter specifically I like try to live tweet press conferences or games so um yeah those are like some other ways to like stay in the loop of what's going on in women's soccer no that's great and I think that well when I started watching soccer we didn't have this Mm -hmm. social media where we could keep up with Alex Morgan again, Cindy LaRue, like what's going on, like them on their personal level as moms, like yeah, getting on the field when they're pregnant, all that stuff. So it's amazing now how we could just spread the word so quickly. Mm-hmm. I went to my first game. It was at this local Houston park and it was like Japan. Mm-hmm. I'm like, can you sign my soccer? <laughs> like stadiums and yeah, I'm so much. And it just gives me goosebumps mm-hmm. thinking about it. Like, right. Like, future holds for like I'm having a girl so what if Mm -hmm. for her you know Mm -hmm. now with Angel City FC and all this like it's just been amazing um but then right now you know we had COVID and all that stuff and I didn't want to bring up with the NWSL they postponed the Olympics to this summer Mm -hmm. and um you know before we have an Olympics or uh, the World Cup we have all these games tournaments before to prepare for that and this year they didn't or last year Mm -hmm. that'll affect their performance, you know, now for this summer. 
Yeah, I think it'll definitely be interesting just because I think like with the NWSL, they kind of got their feet wet with this Challenge Cup this year. Now they're in, you know, just the early weeks of the regular season. And so, yeah, when players have to leave, um, I guess, gosh, almost in June, which is crazy. But when players have to leave soon, I feel like we're just getting into this rhythm of things. And now all these players are going to be pulled and it's going to be like kind of hard to adapt. And um, also like, yeah, then find the right, you know, like a coach put it um like pretty accurately recently where he's like, I feel like I just found the right roster and like playing chemistry. And I have to rework that entire system because of the Olympics. And so I feel like that definitely sums it up just because it's going to be, yeah, a lot of soccer to begin with, but then um, also just seeing like players and how they're going to try to like make, I hope that they don't aren't overworked in the sense of like, they're going to be playing so much, but um, unfortunately I, I feel like injuries are always a thing. And so um, I'm, I won't be surprised if we see like any major injuries or like crazy, you know, changes like that. Again, that's always like an unfortunate situation, but with so much playing time and such shorter time frames, like it's kind of bound to happen too. So I just hope that like overall um, with that overlap that it, you know, they can play it safe, but um, yeah, I, I think there's going to be like so much uh, going on and obviously a lot of like COVID precautions and um things that are going to be a little bit different this year but um overall I kind of wish like the end of ESL would pause their season or you know kind of like have some sort of balance just because I know players um you know also want to play when they're called up to their national team so I think it's just going to be like kind of hectic you know just because of the situation um but I guess for fans that's like always (laughs) nice because there's gonna be so much soccer to watch so um yeah there's gonna be like a lot going on for sure yeah I'm excited to see them in action again I mean it's Mm -hmm. Like I said, all these girls just waiting to see them wear the red, white, and blue. You know, they yeah. time, and it's just amazing to see that that momentum. Um, and then I know right now with there's so many restrictions, but will you be traveling to Tokyo? Will you be out there at some? Point? <laughs> yeah, I actually was planning to go last year, and so I was really excited. And then obviously when uh, it got canceled, I was like, oh, that's a bummer. Um, but unfortunately, I won't be traveling to Tokyo just because. Um, yeah, it's not that it's not worth it, but it's just, you know, with everything being online on Zoom, it's almost like I don't necessarily need to be there. Um, I did go to Portland like a few weeks ago or a month ago or so um, to cover my first like live NWSL game. So that was pretty fun. And I'll actually be going to a Portland and like OL Rain game uh, in the next few weeks to cover that. So for me, that's like fun just because I love those areas, but also like, you know, the cost of flights and all that thing, like all that isn't super expensive. So, um, yeah, while everything like interview wise is on zoom, I feel like, um, it kind of, I don't know, not like kills the vibe, but it's just a little different, you know, not getting that live, like personal action, like, um, conversation with players. So, um, I feel like I'd rather just like kind of hold off until the next world cup or Olympics and like really dive into it. So, um, yeah, no Tokyo for me this summer, but, um, super excited just for the tournament, like as a whole. One thing I do want to say is that Tokyo is beautiful. So when everybody Mm -hmm. wants to go, we went not this December, but last December, okay COVID was like yeah big <laughs> everywhere uh but man just I can't even imagine like how it's gonna be on the stadiums the culture the food like it's so mm-hmm. amazing um but yeah anybody that's out there oh man what a trip <laughs> I'd love to go back um and then right now they have the bracket what do you think of the bracket you have USA New Zealand Australia and Sweden yeah, um, I feel like we always get paired up with Sweden somehow. So it's kind of just like, oh, shocker, right? But I, I think it'll be really exciting. Um, yeah, to see Sweden that even Australia, they've been like so much growth has been happening, I think, internationally with women's soccer. So um, yeah, I think Sweden will be their biggest competition. <laughs> but um, yeah, as a whole, like, Obviously, you know, like with Japan, they've always been like one of their biggest competitors as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, getting down to the to the wire of things we see yeah, like a basically like a, a Japan and USA like rematch, how, like how we have seen in, in previous years. So it's going to be like super intense. I honestly haven't thought so much about it because I've been like so busy with the NWSL. But I know as those conversations are coming up, like, um, yeah, it'll just be crazy to like see player rosters and what that's going to look like, especially for the U.S. I know um they're in like a lot of different like situations right now with 
player precautions and um, injuries and contracts and all these things. So I think like once we have the roster, it'll feel like a little bit more real just because that 18 roster is like a, a huge decision. So um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see, but I think it's going to be like a very, very high level of competitiveness too, just because everyone um, has like soccer, obviously and everything the world in general has just looked different since COVID. So I feel like this will be like a big monumental thing in sports that everyone's going to be like really excited to work up to no definitely and do you have an idea or is there anyone that you want to see on the women's roster that isn't already going to be in this summer tournament yeah um I know there's been like a lot of talk about Tobin Heath and like tweeted something recently oh. where I was in a press conference at Blocko and he said that Laura Harvey um who also coached in the NWSL and like coaches uh um U.S. like youth teams like that she's actually working directly with Tobin Heath um, like on her injury and in the recovery process and like Vlaco is getting like daily updates on this so I think it'll be like super interesting just to see how that unfolds like if she does you know get on this roster or if she doesn't like what that means but I think there's so many like younger players coming up too that like that's what's really exciting um like Sophia Smith I would love to see her on the roster I think she's been doing incredible things to the Portland Thorns and so um I know he's aware of all these things because he goes to NWSL games too but I think as it's like you know in the waiting process there's so much anticipation and trying to look at like okay who's gonna go who's not gonna go so it's definitely a hard call just because because like we literally have no idea <laughs> but I think uh, when that moment does happen like yeah like I said it'll probably just build up more excitement that like this is happening and that um, women's soccer is going to be like at the stage again and so I think that's always exciting but um, that's got to be hard like 18 players he definitely has a lot of talent to choose from <laughs> definitely. and then I mean right now we have the MLS but I just want to like piggyback off of the NWSL mm-hmm. someone who has never watched an NWSL match before how would you describe it to them um like would you give like three reasons Mm -hmm. describing like to watch it yeah I think what's so cool about the NWSL is like um I hate saying this word but I mean it in a good way of like quote unquote they're the underdog when it comes to soccer just because it's like a weekly thing that happens and I think when we think of soccer um we always think of those big tournaments like the Olympics or World Cups or like oh it's the American thing to like do so let's watch it so I think um the NWSL is just like that's where you get like the scope of everything and you also see like U.S. Women's National Team players um being involved and so I think it's just really exciting because it kind of gives you a little bit more of a personal like um, way to look at soccer and like find a team or like several teams and support it and like buy their merch and so I feel like there's more excitement because it feels a little bit more tangible being that they're like consistently in their home market or they're traveling and so yeah I would say that the NWSL for anyone like who is curious about it or like just doesn't know um, I feel like you're missing out if you're like not like even watching one or two like you know matches whatever whether it's weekly monthly like what's nice is like you can choose like when how involved you want to be like with US Women's National Team matches I think because those are more spread out it's like oh you have to plan like your you know day or month whatever around it but like with the NWSL it's like there's like five games in a weekend and they're continuing to grow and so I think that's what's exciting is like even if you watch one game a weekend like I know that like they're, it's always like so fun. Obviously, I can't keep up with every match, but like just watching one or two is like always really cool and like seeing the patterns that develop. So I think it just gets people more excited, like the more that you watch it or um, even just like check in on things like there's always like so much with that. So, um, yeah, I can go on a tangent about that for sure. But like got to watch it, support the NWSL in women's soccer because there's like so many incredible players like in that league. Yeah, I think definitely like the energy, um, mm-hmm. especially now with the social media. Like I said, they could do like the back uh, background scenes, and yeah, it's amazing how you can, like you said, follow their story and then not just mm-hmm. oh, there's so much more. And um, totally I wanted to add, um, what is like? I guess you had Uncle Joe as like a, a supporter, a mentor, but what's like the best mm-hmm. piece of advice that you could give a newbie, like someone who? you know, as a soccer player and then has finished high school or college and then wonders, oh, what's next? Like, how can I get into journalism? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I would say, um, like, gosh, there's so many things I could probably say on this, but, um, 
I would say like it's all about like consistency and I think um, with that comes like the mindset of like what kind of goals do you want to achieve and what do you want to do in life like sure I'm now like 24 but like I feel like I'm still figuring out what I want to do or what woman kickballs like means and where it's going but I think just being consistent and showing up um, every day is so important so I would just say yeah finding that determination and um I guess kind of like time management too, of like just making it work. I think even if you don't have like the insight or knowledge on something, like just find a way to make it work, you know, like there's always going to be a way um, to do something. It's just a matter of like how you're going to do it. Are you going to ask someone for help? Or are you going to like Google it yourself? Or are you just going to sit around and maybe not do anything? Like it really just depends. And I think it comes down to that mindset of like being consistent and determined. And I think that's also something that like I drew from watching the US Women's National Team is just like seeing their consistency and how they show up um, like on and off the field. So yeah, I guess that's something that I would tell to like a person who is like thinking about like chasing their dream in like you know soccer media or different things like that um there's always going to be like someone better than you but then there's also going to be like someone who can learn from you so just finding like that mix and that balance of um yeah like reaching out to people and just like always be open to learning I think is just something like super important yeah and even if someone that's like better than you maybe they've done it longer and it doesn't hurt to reach out and maybe ask for tips. yeah mm-hmm. um can't be scared to just ask totally that's yeah you know but you know that's fine <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, anyone like watching this um where can they find you on social media and how can they yes Mm-hmm. So everything is like Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, if anyone still uses that, and like Pinterest, I think I have one of those, um, is all at Woman Kickball. So um, everything is that. And then I obviously have the website, which is just womankickballs.com. So that's where you can subscribe and get your free sticker there. Um, and also just follow along for updates. But yeah, those are all like the main social media channels. And then um, once you become an email sc- subscriber basically what that means is like anytime I publish an article like you're the first person to like know about it so if there's breaking news or like um I just did a player feature the other day and like that was a pretty big thing so like email subscribers the first to be in the know on things and also kind of get like exclusive like um information (laughs) or like just thoughts from me about you know soccer so um yeah that's where people can find me at and guys again I've been a subscriber and her content is amazing if you want to just keep track of like who's winning and uh, like she said, uh, interviewing the players, getting to know them a little bit better, definitely subscribe to, to the newsletter. And then I just wanted to end with some quick rapid fire questions. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, um, let's see. Um, let's do, what are the top two things on your bucket list? Oh man. Good question. Um, skydiving and why well, you did that, but it's still, I guess we'll do again. Um, skydiving and, Gosh, I don't know. Going yeah, to Olympic or like World Cup tournament. Nice. Okay. And then what is your favorite city in the U.S. besides the one that you live in? <laughs> Love this question. Um, gosh, I would say Seattle is really cool. Seattle? Oh, I've never been, but I've heard it's amazing. Yeah, definitely. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, hands down, uh, cookie dough for sure. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite number? Five. What? Me too. <laughs> really? Oh, nice. <laughs> Love it. Um, if you had to choose cake or pie. Ooh, um, that's tough, but I'll go with cake. cake with like yeah. cream on the side? Yeah, yeah. You got to have something there. <laughs> um, so this one I like. If you could have dinner with one person, dead or, or alive, um, who would your guest of honor be? Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, I've definitely thought about this before. But the one person that I would name would be um, Fred Rogers. I just grew up watching him. And I thought like he was Mr. Rogers, like great guy. So yeah, that would be my answer. (laughs) Nice. And then I got three more. Um, When are you inspired the most? Ooh, um, probably, which I've been trying to get better than the hang of, but probably when I work out, which again, isn't like a lot, but probably like when I just finish a run or like do something, um, I guess like physical or active like that. I feel like that's when I'm like, yeah, I can do anything. So, um, yeah. Uh, and then what's your favorite holiday? Oh, Christmas, which I know is like a basic answer, but yeah. (laughs) Um, and then if you can make a documentary about anything, what would it be? Oh man, um, this is a good question. Huh. Probably this is like very random, but probably like 
Um, <laughs> I don't know. This is like the first thing that came to my mind. Like all like like analog things of like typewriters and record players and like cassette like players, like just like the history behind all these things that like are now like obviously like we have an iPhones or smartphones. So just seeing like the kind of before times of how things were made or like used and comparing it to now, I feel like that would be super interesting. Nice. No, definitely. <laughs> um, well, again, um, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, again, I connected with her when I saw her on Angel City FC. She had a, or Angel City Chicks. I saw her mm-hmm. professor interview there and I was like, I need to connect with her. This is amazing. <laughs> like she's doing a, her blog. Again, I subscribed and you guys mm-hmm. out if you don't. So again, Jackie, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we'll connect again. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. We'll follow up after the Olympics. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) All right, thank you. Yeah, for sure.